Hi, my name's Clayton, and today I want to talk to you about something that I think is important. There's no new live sports happening, for the most part right now, so we can't go forward with sports, so the only thing that's left is for us to go backwards. So today, I want to answer a question that I think's been on a lot of our minds. So on today's episode of Untitled Video Series, that is less of a series and more of a humorous examination of something about basketball. Are the Knicks the worst basketball franchise of the 21st century? Yes. But why? Are the Knicks the worst basketball franchise of the 21st century? Well, I'm glad you asked. You might think you know the answer, and you probably do. But we talk about how f***ing awful the Knicks are all the time, and I think we've forgotten just how absolutely, unbelievably putrid the Knicks have been for the last 20 years. To set the groundwork, here's a 15 second history of the New York Knicks. The New York Knickerbockers are the most valuable NBA franchise that exists and is valued at or over 4 billion US dollars. They were one of the original teams of the BAA that eventually merged with the NBL to create the NBA. They are one of two original NBA teams that still play in their original city, the other being the Boston Celtics. The Celtics have won 17 championships, the Knicks have won two. Some of you might remember the smorgasbord of shit that the Knicks played with in the 2000s. Some of you might not remember because you were like me and you were too busy watching it at an Eddie, even though your mom said you weren't allowed to, and playing with your Game Boy Advanced SP, not knowing that somewhere out there, the New York Knicks were getting their brains beaten in by a team with half their payroll. Let's talk about their all-time dumpers of players. We've got classics like Eddie Curry, Jerome James, Allen Houston, and Joakim Noah. All dudes that the New York Knicks paid insane amounts of money to, to miss games and not contribute diddly shit when they played. Right off the bat, I feel a little bad for including Allen Houston in the all-time dumpers list. He was a really important part of the 99 Knicks team that made the finals. That usually means something for Ewing. Adam Houston. Houston ducks under. Got it! With eight tenths left. He signed a huge contract in 2001, and by the 04 season, he was one of the five highest paid players in the league. In that 04 season, Houston only played 50 games because of an injury. The next season, with the third highest salary in the NBA, Allen Houston only played 20 games because of injury. By the following year, Allen Houston with the second highest salary in the NBA played in zero games because of injury. Sorry, Allen, you're an all-time dumper. Jerome James is probably my favorite of the all-time dumpers. In his first five seasons in the NBA, he averaged almost five points a game, three and a half rebounds, and almost half of an assist in five seasons. That's a pretty good sample size. But then Jerome Rome balled out in the 2005 playoffs. I'm talking about 12 points. I'm talking about seven rebounds. A game. For 11 whole games. So, the Knicks did the only thing that made sense at the time. They signed him to a five-year, $30 million contract. Now you should know that on Jerome's basketball reference page, he has one nickname listed. Hell yeah. Jerome got paid more in 2006 than LeBron James did. LeBron led the league in scoring and was named to first team All-NBA. Jerome averaged three points a game. And nine minutes a game. As a Nick, Jerome played for four years and only played in 27% of the Knicks games. He never averaged over three points a game. I love you, Big Snacks. Eddie Curry was awesome because the Knicks actually traded for him in 2005, giving up some players and two first-round draft picks. But hey, he was a seven-foot center, so... Sure. And then the Knicks decided that they needed to lock up the future of their franchise. So what did they do? They went right ahead and signed Eddie Curry to a six-year, $60 million contract. So... What does our boy, the most famous basketball player named Curry that ever was or will be, do? 
He misses 54% of the Knicks games and never averages double-digit rebounds as a seven-footer. And those two draft picks they gave up to get him, well, they turned into seven-time All-Star LaMarcus Aldridge and Defensive Player of the Year Joakim Noah. Speaking of Joakim Noah, we all remember the Joakim Noah of the Bulls. The villain, the hustler, the defender, the all-around impressive player. With the Knicks, well, how about missing over two-thirds of the team's game? No, that's bad. Uh, well, what if Joakim Noah gets into an argument with then-head coach Jeff Hornacek, so the Knicks, as an organization, basically just tell him to f*** off? That's bad, too. Right. Cool. Uh, okay, well, at least they're only paying him $72 million over four years. All-time dumper. So that's our all-time dumpers list. Shout out to honorable mentions Frederick Weiss, Jared Jeffries, Starberry, Andrea Bargnani, and Antonio McDice. Say, who are the dipshits that keep giving up assets and paying these guys so much goddamn money? Ah, yes. The front office. If the players are the heart, the front office is the brain. They decide who gets drafted, who gets traded, who gets paid, who makes the money, who gets the honeys, who's kind of cute, and who's just a mess. If we're talking about the New York Knicks of the 21st century, and we're talking about executives, there's really only two names that we need to bring up. First, the godfather of shitty executives himself, two-time NBA champion, Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah is the guy responsible for trading for Eddie Curry, giving Big Snacks so much money, and a host of other decisions that make you scratch your head and wonder how one of the most outstanding, intelligent basketball players of all time could possibly be so stupid. And as if tanking from the inside wasn't bad enough, we're a bad team. Look at the roster. I mean, it was a bad team. Isaiah Thomas took over from Larry Brown as head coach after Larry Brown got fired in 2006. Isaiah had an entirely different agenda. And then Isaiah Thomas finished his coaching career with a win percentage of only 34%. How do you top all that? Well, you get accused of sexual harassment by a former Knicks employee in a lawsuit that results in $11.5 million settlement. Duh. It's simple f up your legacy stuff, guys. Come on. The other big kahuna burger of executive idiots is none other than the Zen master himself, 11-time champion head coach, Phil Jackson. When he got hired as the president of basketball operations back in 2014, a lot of Knicks fans thought that this was going to be the guy who finally put the Knicks back on a winning track. And if you haven't figured it out by now, the people I'm talking about in this video are pretty emphatically not the people who put the Knicks back on a winning track. In a move that shouldn't surprise you at this point, Philly Bob Thornton was getting paid a lot of money by the Knicks to do his job. And you might ask why. It wasn't because he was already a super celebrated basketball executive. Because Phil Jackson had never been a basketball executive before. In fact, he was being paid so much money because he didn't really want to do the job in the first place. A top 15 draft pick told me the other day, because we were involved in this conversation about Phil Jackson and the Knicks, and he said, Phil Jackson was falling in and out of sleep during my workout. But the Knicks needed someone, Phil Jackson said yes, to an insane amount of money. So now he's got the job, and the Knicks need a coach. Phil knows coaching. What are you thinking, Phil? Never coached anything before ever, Derek Fisher. But guess what? Plot twist. Just over a year after Phil took over, the Knicks drafted Chris Stapp's Porzingis with the fourth pick. And oh, how the pick was reviled. They drafted who? Who the f*** is this? This f sucker might not even have a f***ing green card. Get the f*** out of here, you mother f People were giggling to themselves. The Knicks did it to themselves again. What a bunch of... Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, gee, gee whiz, man. This, this poor Zingus guy might really be something. Wow. Nice one, Phil. Now you just have to decide what you want to do with Carmelo. Okay. So, you want to trade him. Well, that's going to be kind of tough, considering, you know, 
you gave him a contract with a no trade clause, but I'm sure you'll figure something out, right? Carmelo a lot of times wants to hold the ball longer than we have a rule. If you hold it past two seconds, right. you benefit the defense. So he has a little bit of a tendency to hold it to three, four, five seconds. Then everybody comes to a stop. Okay, well, way to f*** that one up, Phil. Now you just have to not f*** up Porzingis. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, no, sure, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, um, bye, Phil. At this point, I feel like a lot of Knicks fans are no longer watching. If they even clicked on this video in the first place. I feel like they feel some kind of frustration and anger at how the Knicks have been so bad over the last 20 years. And I get that. Trust me. I'm a New Orleans Saints fan. If somebody made a video about how they blow it in the playoffs every single year, I'd probably be upset too. But I didn't blow those playoff games. And you as Knicks fans, you didn't trade for Eddie Curry. You didn't fire Marv Albert, the golden voice of the NBA and color commentator for the New York Knicks just because he would talk about how bad the Knicks were. You didn't do anything wrong. All you did was care. It's not your fault. We all know whose fault it really is. It all goes back to him. He took over primary ownership of the New York Knicks in 1999, and since the turn of the century, the Knicks have had the worst record of any team in the NBA. James Dolan is the drooling troglodyte who has okayed every move and signed every check that the New York Knicks have made. If you think the last dance shit on Jerry Krause, think about this. Jerry Krause was a weasel, yes, but he was also a general manager who put together a six-time NBA champion. James Dolan, on the other hand, is an owner who has successfully transformed the most successful brand of basketball into a turd of his own creation. So come with me, and let's make fun of this pudgy billionaire dum-dum together. Dolan isn't just an idiot. He also seems like kind of an asshole. Charles Oakley is a legendary basketball player in New York City. Ever since he was traded to the Knicks in 1988, he has exemplified the city's tough, hungry, effort-centric attitude. He played there for 10 years, made an all-star team, and was a huge part of the 1990s Knicks. What was said to you when they when the security yeah, so they approached me? ordered that I had to leave the gym. Did you say anything to James no. Dolan? He was in front no. of you. Four rows from Dolan. No, I didn't. Spike Lee, super celebrated director, grew up in New York, once got into a verbal altercation with Reggie Miller, and maybe lost his team a playoff game. He is perhaps the most iconic, famous, recognizable Knicks fan in the world. If anyone can have a good time at Madison Square Garden, it's our main man, Spike. Lay out the red carpet for him. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, Spike Lee! The last 28 years... I've used one entrance. Yesterday, last night, I go in, my ticket gets scanned. I'm in. Security guy, they're all, this comes from the top. He says, Mr. Lee, you have to leave Madison Square Garden and come back on 31st Street. Then I, and then they said, we want you to leave the garden. I put my hands behind my back and I said, arrest me like my brother Charles Oakley. So at that time, Dolan comes over to me and says, we need to talk. I said, talk about what? We need to talk. I said, Mr. Dolan, I don't want to talk about nothing. Why do you think the policy changed at least towards you? I'm being, I'm, I'm being, harassed, I'm being harassed by James Dolan. I don't know why. Okay, but uh, celebrities can still come to Knicks games, right? New York City? Celebrities? <laughs> And this, mwah, the chef's kiss. In 2015, a 73-year-old lifelong Knicks fan wrote an email to James Dolan saying that he had done some utterly stupid things, disgraced the Knicks, and begged him to sell the team. You know, normal angry fan stuff. Certainly nothing for the billionaire owner of the New York Knicks to get into a tizzy about. Right? Here is said billionaire owner of the New York Knicks' tizzy. Quote, Mr. Bierman, you are a sad person. Why would anyone write such a hateful letter? I'm just guessing, but I'll bet your life is a mess and that you are a hateful mess. What have you done that anyone would consider positive or nice? I am betting nothing. In fact, I'll bet you are a negative force in everyone who comes in contact with you. 
you most likely have made your family miserable. Alcoholic, maybe. I just celebrated my 21st anniversary of sobriety. You should try it. Maybe it will help you become a person that folks would like to have around. In the meanwhile, start rooting for the Nets, because the Knicks don't want you. Respectfully, James Dolan. Heh. <laughs> Got him. So, at this point, I just kind of want to list some dumb shit that the Knicks did that we can just, like, pin on James Dolan, if that's cool with you guys. Okay. They lowballed Steve Kerr, traded Chris Stapp's Porzingis for cap space, gave up some really good players and assets to trade for Melo, even though they could have just waited until the summer to sign him, let Lin Sanity die with a whimper and leave town, and they pumped up the 2019 free agent class as the one that was finally going to save the Knicks. They were going to get Zion, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving. It was going to be different this time. It was going to be awesome. And then it wasn't. You can't blame anyone for ping pong balls not going your way, but f*** it. Let's blame Dolan, right? He sucks. If there's such a thing as karma, it's James Dolan's fault that the Knicks didn't win the lottery and get Zion. As for Kevin Durant, they didn't offer him a max contract. Yeah, he's coming off an Achilles injury, but he's Kevin Durant. You're the New York Knicks. And Kyrie? Um, I don't know. They f***ed it up. What do you want to know, huh? Since James Dolan took over the Knicks, they have been absolutely, positively the worst basketball team in the NBA. And I mean, sure, somebody has to be the worst, but doesn't it like boggle your mind that Madison Square Garden, the Mecca, the most famous arena in the world, in the heart of New York City, has been host to the worst professional basketball team in the country for the last two decades? The New York Knicks are one of the five most valuable sports franchises in the world. And they're a joke. I literally just made like a 14 minute video where all I did was talk about stuff that they did. And while I was making it, while I was writing it, I laughed a lot. James Dolan has managed to take the most valuable brand of basketball and turn it into the most irrelevant team in the league. And if that doesn't say something about the way he does his work, I don't know what does. So if there's no other point to this video than just to laugh at the incompetence of the Knicks, I want it to be this. Knicks fans, know that you are not alone and that it's not your fault. We're all rooting for you. I will root for you. And I will always be here for you. So, why are the New York Knicks the worst basketball franchise of the 21st century? It's not delivery. It's Dolan.